Mr. Pyman, uh, please give a warm welcome to him. This is really exciting to me. You know, I look and I see these kind of people, um, people that I see every day, and then other people I'm just meeting for the first time, but we all have the same, same thing at heart, and I appreciate that. Um, if I get a little bit emotional today, don't let that bother you. It hasn't bothered anybody else. But uh, this is something that's really dear to my heart. They asked me, I talked to a journalist yesterday, and he said, you're going to you have notes, you're going to have papers, you have to know what you're going to read out. He wanted to help me with uh, what I was supposed to say today. And I talked to him for a few minutes, and he goes, you know, I can't help you. And I said, why is that? He says, because you're talking from your heart, and that's what the people need to hear. So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to talk to you why I do the things that I do. You'll understand me very well when you leave here today and why we're all still going to have our guns here in Jackson. <laughs> yeah. but in the interviews and stuff I did you know, yesterday, they talked about uh, you know, the job of a sheriff. You know, my, I'm responsible for the people inside this county. On the outside of this county, they're important to us, but I'm not responsible for them. Their sheriff's going to have to stand up and make his own decision as to what he's going to do for his people. And I looked, and you know, I couldn't justify um, if Obama passes this. It doesn't matter what he passes. The sheriff has more power than the, than the federal people. They need to go back and they study that. We're a commonwealth. I can ask the federal people to leave. They have to leave. I can ask state people to leave. They have to leave. What I'm saying is this is, this is our home. I'm an elected official, the highest elected official. From this point on, it, it can, it's a um, appointed by a government. It's appointed by somebody else. But you're, this is the only opportunity that the people have to speak for themselves as to this is what we want. And so I take that very, um, very personal. You know, they've they've entrusted me to make a decision for them. And so it's easy to say, well, Denny, you know, how are you going to, you know, we're going to pull these guns? I said, you're never going to pull a gun from Jackson County. And uh, he says, well, what do you mean? And I could tell that the guy I was talking to was pretty much, he was a liberal, you know. And so we got to talking, and uh, I explained to him why. And I said, you know, I, I live in the far end of the county. And I'm responsible for people that are on the other end of the county. High school is an area that's, it's, uh, you know, uh, it's real rural. There's not a lot of people around there, but we have, those are our citizens that live there. And I said, uh, you know, it's, it's funny. I said, they call me. You know, early in the morning, hey, look, I've got this. I try, it takes me an hour, 45 minutes to an hour to get to that location. So what happens when my phone rings? I'm listening to an elderly person scared to death. They say, I'm in Heisel. There's somebody kicking at my front door talking about coming in here and killing me. And I say, stay on the phone. I'm coming your way. 45 minutes I get to listen to this guy, right? Would I rather have him have a cell phone in his hand or a firearm in his hand? Only thing I've ever told the people whenever I come to, when somebody's kicking and coming to the front door, that's the only thing I ask, is I just have to listen to one side of the story. <laughs> it's pretty easy. That, that person has no right to be coming through their front door at any hour, making demands, making threats, making anything. I can't get there quick enough to help those people. My best help to them is to let them keep their fire on. So that's how I, I can justify an elderly person keeping a fire. I can justify a young person keeping a fire. There's nobody I really don't understand that doesn't need to have one. You know, just like when we come into a group, I look at people, I don't who packs and who doesn't pack. Some of them legally, some of them illegally. You know, but they, but that's their right. The Second Amendment makes that very clear. And our forefathers made that very clear. Otherwise, they would have been so high on the amendment. It would have been down the list someplace, but it was so important to them. And, you know, I look back today, and this is the part that's emotional <clears throat> to me, is I would be ashamed if one of them was in this room right now and having to listen to what we're having to talk about. I would be ashamed to have them sit here and listen to all the people that have <clears throat> given their lives for this right for us. And we just give it up so flippantly just because somebody says so. If we did everything that somebody says so, we would not be a country today just because somebody says so. Because we have a different kind of people here. Are people that are <clears throat> they're wanting to be independent. That's why we started our independence. You know, an independent being able to carry a gun. That's an, that's an independent choice, too. But you know, I, the, the guy I was talking to yesterday, we talked for quite a bit, and I said, now that you've interviewed me, I want to interview you. It's okay. I said, tell me a little bit about yourself. <clears throat> and he says, uh, well, this is, you know, I've been doing this, this, this. And I said, well, tell me about your family. 
He said, he said, well, my wife's a school teacher. What <laughs> school teacher? I said, well, yeah. I said, let me ask you a question. I said, the phone rings, you pick up your phone, and you get on your phone, your wife's hysteric. She says, listen, you can hear fire in the background. And I says, if you're talking, she says, honey, they're coming down the hallway. Somebody's got a gun. You can hear them going, they're screaming, they're shooting kids in the classroom. How many times have we heard that already? You know, calling us to tell their loved one goodbye. You know? Um, so here it is that uh, this has come down the hallway. And after I listened, I, I laid out this scenario for him. And he got real quiet. And I said, now, I said, sir, what would you have? Would you rather have her have a cell phone in her hand or would you have her be armed? I said, rather her be armed. Armed people get to go home at night. She will get to go home that night and rest and sleep. He doesn't have to sleep in an empty bed. You know what I'm saying? He did, the children get tucked in because they made a firearm. That's something we cannot give up. They've talked to me about everything from, you know, they tried to throw different things. Well, you know, we might as well legalize hand grenades. Well, if that's what you need for personal protection, well, I guess that's what you need to do. You know? I like that. <laughs> I can do for my community. I can't do it for the other counties. I can't stand up for them, but I can't stand up for my people. And you know, I was one of the first people to say, I, I think they need to arm school teachers. Not all of them, but they need. To, there's somebody that needs to have a weapon there, and they need to. Like, you know, there's no honor for these guys that go in and shoot up a classroom and kill somebody. If you know, they, well, that guy got 20, and they big press deal, and they, you know, he doesn't get to see it, but all these other people do, and they get the idea. What would happen to the first two or three that tried that and got shot coming in the front door? They wouldn't do that anymore. It would be taken from them. There's no glory in that for them, which they look at that as glory. We need to start just eliminating these things as they come up. And the, the first thing we need to eliminate is to, not to take that freedom from us. But that is so important to us because that's it gives us our freedom. Yeah, so that's, um, that's kind of what we talked about. In Jackson County, as, as long as I'm sheriff here, I've got children, um, I've got family, I've got friends, I've got everybody here. And I feel a whole lot better knowing when I come into a room, if everybody's packing, then if I'm the only one, you know, um, because they take me out first, that means they're going to take out everybody else, too. But as long as they don't know who's got what, it, it makes it pretty even grounds for everything. Uh, but I'm open for any questions, anything anybody would like to ask.